Hello, Monetization Nation. Deirdre Breckenridge is a 30-year veteran in public relations marketing. She's the author of seven business books, including Answers for Modern Communicators. Today, we're going to discuss modern public relations and how it works alongside marketing. Tectonic shifts are constantly transforming the earth and business, causing destruction and huge growth opportunities. I'm Nathan Gwilliam, the host of Monetization Nation, where we learn how to leverage business tectonic shifts to transform monetization. In today's episode, I am joined by Deirdre. She is an author, entrepreneur, and CEO at Pure Performance Communications. As a 30-year veteran in PR, marketing, and branding, she's worked with senior leaders at Fortune 500 companies. Deirdre is a career-long storyteller and strategist. She helps brands and professionals to ignite more energy around their communications, lead pressing media conversations, and grow influence in the market. She's been working with leaders for decades to create award-winning PR and marketing programs and build relationships based on loyalty and advocacy. Deirdre is the author of seven business books, including this one we're going to talk about a lot today, Answers for Modern Communicators. Her most recent book is Answers for Ethical Marketers, which will be released by Rutledge Publishing in April 2021. Um, Her book, Answers for Modern Communicators, was recently named by Book Authority as one of the 100 best storytelling books of all time. Deirdre has previously taught PR and social media courses online and in classrooms for NYU, UMass, at Amherst, Rutgers University, and Fairleigh Dickinson University. She took her passion for teaching to lynda.com and later LinkedIn Learning as an instructor who has developed eight video courses on PR and marketing. Deirdre is also developing courses for the Feel Academy focused on helping professionals to face fears, engage with empathy, live with ethics, and unleash love through their communications and all of their business interactions. As an international speaker, Deirdre shares her research and career journey in PR, marketing, branding, and social media communications. Deirdre has been blogging at PR Strategies for over 10 years, and she also is the host of the podcast Women Worldwide, which is in its sixth year and has nearly 2 million downloads. Congratulations on your incredible success, and welcome to the show today, Deirdre. Thank you. Thank you, Nathan. It's great to be with you. Can we start off by having you share with us something that you are super passionate about? Well, I would say right now I am super passionate about meditating and being aligned and centered. And it's just a a great way. And I recommend this to not just my clients that I work with on their communications so that they can be present and aware, but to anybody because it, it helps so much to find your own energy and to attract great energy into your life, into your career. Tell me about your journey to become a, an expert in modern public relations and your entrepreneurial journey. Well, a lot of that, you have to be self-aware. <laughs> There's no doubt about it. When it comes to the whole entrepreneurial journey, I didn't actually know I was going to be an entrepreneur. So I was always destined to be in public relations and marketing. I was one of those kids who knew right from the start and went to college and said, oh, I'm going to choose PR. And one of the things that as I progressed in my career, I got really good with handling client work and media relations and and writing and storytelling. And I was working for a gentleman who basically said to me, I was running his company and he would say, I live in New Jersey. And one of the things that's well known in New Jersey is that you go down the shore at Memorial Day. And if you were lucky enough to have a shore house, you would stay through Labor Day. So my boss would say to me, I'm leaving and I'll see you on Labor Day and you pretty much run the business. And I thought to myself, wow, I'm doing this for somebody else. Why don't I venture out and start my own little PR company? And that's exactly what I did. That was the Breckenridge Group. And that had to be in 1998. (laughs) That was my first company. And I became an entrepreneur. I shocked everybody in my family. 
but that was the start of the journey and I haven't looked back since. So you do, you were doing it well for someone else and you realized you could do it for yourself. That's right. And nobody in my family, what was funny, Nathan, is that when I called up my mom and dad, they were the first folks who I wanted to tell. And I said, you know what? I'm going to be an entrepreneur. And they said, you don't, nobody in our family, we don't, we don't have entrepreneurs in the family. And then my dad said, no, 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 wait, grandma was a bootlegger in the 1920s. <laughs> I guess that's entrepreneurial. It was during prohibition. <laughs> she used to make, I guess, some kind of plum wine in her basement. So there you go. I, I got grandma's entrepreneurial spirit. She was good at taking and managing risks, I guess. Yes, exactly. Which you have to be able to do to be an entrepreneur. Definitely. Okay. So you started your firm in 1998 and PR back in 1998 was different than it is today. It has evolved a lot. We didn't have social media back then, and we didn't have all of the digital tools. I remember when I started my career, uh, not much before 1998, and I remember PR was something completely different than what it is today. It, it feels like back then everyone just wrote a press release and then spammed that press release out to a whole bunch of different media organizations, and that model does not work very well today. Can you talk to us a little bit about what PR was and how it has evolved and what modern public relations is today? Well, you're exactly right because we lived by the news, we lived for the news release. What would happen, you would get your C-suite executives handing down messages to the PR team who would then take those messages, put it into a news release and that would be broadcasted out. And frankly, what we learned was that that way of trying to control the message doesn't work with today and modern media. That's number one. So if you think about the way stories have changed and the way people receive and prefer to get their stories from social media, or maybe they want it from cable news, or maybe they want it from some other outlet or they're, they're in their communities. We had to adjust to that. And as PR professionals, we also learned that the, the messages don't just flow out of a communications department. They actually bubble up in communities. They go out from different parts of your company. Everybody's on social media today. So it kind of turned us on our sides a bit to get used to the fact that we can't control these stories through a vehicle called news releases that would then go to journalists who would print them. Today, people are citizen journalists. And that was the biggest change. The power of the story was in the hands of the people on social media. And we really had to adjust to that. Okay. So, so it's changed and it's, it's more people producing content and it's pushing it out to, to a larger group of people. Um, and we're probably not going to call a CNN reporter and give them a story. How, how do we get a story out to those major media outlets now? So what's interesting is, well, it's always going to be about your contacts. And yes, if you have really good contacts and you've developed relationships and you know producers at CNN, then you can get your experts in who can give commentary or they can comment on background for stories that are being developed. However, we also have to realize the media, whether it's CNN, Fox News, MSNBC, they're all watching what goes on on social media as well. Media feeds media. So it's not, uh, it wouldn't be unusual for something to bubble up on social media and then it ends up on your cable news stations or your network news stations, or something could be happening within the news itself on TV. And then that transfers over to social media. They work hand in hand. Where the story starts always depends, but you can see how media feeds media. Okay, um, what are the most important elements that people need to know, the essentials that they need to know about modern public relations? 
I would say that in modern PR today, you are in a fishbowl. <laughs> so everything that you do, everybody sees. And that's why when you're out there, you are open and transparent. You're bringing your authentic self. You have to always bring your good judgment and your ethics <laughs> to your stories. Uh, this is a crazy media landscape. However, you want to be that expert who comes with the helpful information, the do no harm type of information. You also have to recognize who you keep around yourself. So for example, if you want a credible brand, it's great to align with other influencers that have credible brands because public relations is about credibility. It is about public opinion and shifting opinions. And whoever you align to is representative of your brand. That's where I think it, it takes a lot of technology and social media monitoring to make sure that you actually know how you look out there and what's being said about you. So it's great, don't get me wrong, it's great to go out there and be sharing your knowledge and engaging in conversations and building momentum. But if you don't know how you're being perceived, then that's really tough because all it takes is some missteps, some comments to go sideways, and things can go viral on social media. So you want to be careful with modern PR. It's a, it's a responsibility. What you're saying, what you're doing, and also your responsibility to make sure that you know what's going on around your brand. Love it. So you talked about needing to monitor, use tools to monitor our brands. Um, which tools do you recommend for monitoring or other aspects of modern public relations? There are so many different tools and platforms. If you're looking for a free tool and you want to use it to carve out conversations and to see who's talking about you on social media and to be watching what some of your favorite journalists or TV hosts are saying, you could use Hootsuite. And Hootsuite lets you take a look at how you look on Twitter and what you want to be monitoring. You can do use Hootsuite for Facebook. You can use it for Instagram, for LinkedIn. So that is a free tool. And, and it's free to paid, of course, depending on how much you use it. Or if you're a, a communications professional and you're using it for clients, you're going to have to move to the paid version. There is also a platform called Notified. And that is from Intrado Digital. And Notified is a good platform because that lets you do a lot of monitoring around conversations, which feeds you ideas for possibly pitching journalists. And then you can craft your stories and reach out to journalists through the platform and then monitor on the back end and, and measure how well you do and how much pickup and how, how much engagement there is. So those are two platforms. I also want to give a shout out to TalkWalker because TalkWalker has a very powerful engine when it comes to conversations and their search tool. And you can learn what's being said about you, what the trending topics are, and, and ways that you can creatively pitch to really put yourself out there in different ways and where your voice needs to be heard. How do PR and marketing work together? Well, this has been the, the question <laughs> for years since I, I started in PR. Back in the day, I remember we would work with marketing and advertising because we knew, for example, if we were pitching a trade journal, and we wanted to get editorial coverage for our client. So at, at the time it was JVC broadcast. So we would be getting a story in their trade magazine and we would know exactly when stories would run. In between, we would work with marketing to make sure that the times that we didn't necessarily have the editorial, there would be advertising of our product. So we were always in every single issue. And that was really the only way that we were coordinating back then. Today, it's much different. 
the silos are broken. And I think that PR and marketing are now understanding the benefit of how we can really work together to tighten up everything that we do. And I think that knowing that we're in it together and we're all on the same team and being less territorial over who owns what is beneficial because there's a lot of overlap. There's blurring of the lines today. Uh, in school, uh, universities teach public relations and advertising where back in the day, advertising clearly was a part of the marketing business function. Search engine optimization. That was another thing uh, years ago, I would have said, oh, that's somebody else's job. No, <laughs> PR is all about storytelling and content. So we have to understand how are we tagging our content, the descriptions, and also being on the same page with marketing who is using content. And, and what, how are they optimizing? And how do we optimize together? So it's ways that not necessarily taking away, but how can we enhance one another? To know that a campaign is rolling out through marketing, the best thing the marketing department can do is to have the public relations team on board and ready to gauge public perception over a campaign. We shouldn't have to guess what's going on next, we need to be there because PR needs to be listening and to join that conversation and to make sure what needs to get to marketing gets to marketing and what needs to get to executives gets to executives and what we can answer, we do. So it's teamwork and that's what's so important, especially as we're digitized today. Yeah. Okay, so you've talked about the importance of breaking down the silos. How do we break down those work silos? Well, there's a couple of ways to do that. I think it's getting people together to understand what their jobs are. I remember having a training session with PR and marketing people, and you would be surprised that they didn't know what each other's day looked like. And sometimes when you have a buddy system and you share or you walk a day, in somebody's shoes, it really opens your eyes to what they do, why they're doing it, what role you fit in. And I think it's closer communications. I think it's communication on the inside of a company where I know companies are doing this, they're using social media on the inside. And that's really important because PR and marketing should be collaborating together. When I owned an agency, this is sad to say, but my PR team had a fight to be at the table at the beginning of a campaign when we knew public perception, we knew what the market wanted. We had done some research and what we had done would have transferred over so nicely to the marketing team. And I think today it's a no brainer that the collaboration and the innovation has to start with the entire team. So if leaders, can be the role models. And I always say if um, I use the example more of the marketing and the technology silo, if marketing and technology leaders can be together sharing and collaborating, it trickles down. So it would be the same thing for PR and marketing leaders to mm -hmm. lead the way. So obviously the best case scenario is that the marketing and PR leaders work together collaboratively, collaboratively on their own. And, and choose to do it to make their own areas as effective as possible. Um, sometimes that doesn't happen. And, and honestly, I think this one is on the CEO or the, the top leaders of the company. If I've seen it most effectively done when those top leaders push it down and, and almost mandate that collaboration or structure that collaboration, uh, that tends to be where it works the best. Sometimes they can do it in a way that's fun. If you can be creative with getting people together to brainstorm on different ways to, to get campaigns out there or what the next campaign can be to put groups together or to ask people to partner up for prizes or ways that they can be rewarded, well, or recognized. It's not just about reward, it's also recognition. You'd be surprised how people 
sort of rise to the occasion and want to be a part of something different and to partner up with their marketing friends or their PR friends or their IT friends. <laughs> so what are your best secrets and tips for building uh, strong relationships with the media? I would say to, I mean, there's so many different ways that you can build a relationship, but I think it's to understand what that person is about, who they're serving, what are their interests, why do they write about what they're writing or speak about or their shows are tailored to, get to know them. I mean, this is Media Relations 101. There's no shortage of information. So we always talk about the briefing book. Google is at your fingertips. And there's so many ways to learn about a journalist. And I would rather have 20 really good relationships with media professionals than a list of 100 or 500 that we're just shooting stories out to. Now, if it's a groundbreaking news story, then you can cast a wider net. But if it's you want to get your expert in front of a particular outlet on a particular show to be the go-to expert, then it takes a lot of knowledge and understanding. And once you can understand the agenda of that journalist or that outlet, it's a lot easier to creatively pitch if you're tuned in. And agenda is actually an acronym. And I like to say that you it's not just about your agenda when you wanna be in the news or you wanna be covered, it's theirs. It's about their attitude it's their general bias because all outlets and media professionals have bias. It's their education level. It's the narrative that's already there. It's the data and what you can gather to understand and how whatever is being shared affects their community. So think agenda, not just yours, too many experts and companies that want to be covered, just think about what they want to share and why they want to share it. It's not just your agenda, it's theirs. Is there a great story you can share with us of a company that's, that's done a great job with modern PR? Well, there are a lot of companies that I have worked with. Um, I want to say that right now, because I'm really focused on what I call FEEL, which is a communications model that came out of a, a study that I did after my stepdaughter passed away. It stands for face your fears, engage with empathy, use ethics and good judgment and unleash the love. And that is modern PR. And one of my clients very much embodies FEEL. She's a trauma psychiatrist and she is out there today every week talking about bullying. She's talking about uh, some of the conspiracy theories, why people are vulnerable. She's talking about relationships, toxic relationships, but it's all showing feel. And that's what I stand for. And she also believes in empathy and she talks about love skills. You couldn't ask for better modern PR in the sense that she's on TV, she's a powerful digital powerhouse, and you're taking the best of storytelling, but you're creating impact with people and being human and this notion of emotional intelligence can really take us farther so that people can connect and have better relationships. Thank you so much, Deirdre, for sharing your stories and knowledge with us today. Here are some of my key takeaways from this episode. Number one, PR has changed. Many stories no longer flow out of a company's communications department. The stories are created inside communities on social media instead. Number two, social media monitoring is essential to see how we're perceived. Number three, we should be actively engaged on social media to share positive stories about our brand. Number four, we should develop good relationships with media outlets and influencers. It's better to have 10 really good relationships with media professionals than to have a list of 100 connections that barely know us. 
Number five, PR and marketing leaders should collaborate and lead the way for their teams to collaborate. If you enjoyed this interview and want to learn more about Deirdre or connect with her, you can find her on LinkedIn. You can also visit her website at DeirdreBreckenridge.com. And there's links to both of those sites in the blog post for this episode at MonetizationNation.com. Do you want to be a better digital monetizer? Then please follow these channels to receive free digital monetization content. Number one, please subscribe to the free monetization e-magazine at monetizationnation.com. Number two, you can subscribe to the Monetization Nation podcast or YouTube channel. And number three, please follow Monetization Nation on Instagram and Twitter. What are the most effective PR strategies you've used to share your stories and messages? Please join our private Monetization Nation Facebook group and share your insights with other digital monetizers. Thanks for joining me for this episode. I wish you success in your modern public relations. Do you want to become a better digital monetizer? To receive great monetization stories and secrets, please go to monetizationnation.com and join free. And if you liked today's episode, please subscribe to the show and share it.